Thank you, Cheyenne. This is John Lombardo. I'm with uh, Evoca Water Technologies. I'm a product manager in our PROACT Environmental Solutions Division. We address needs in municipal drinking water, uh, as well as industrial water and wastewater uh, for contaminant removal and other things, as well as vapor and other things. So uh, I've been with the company for, for uh, 25 years. And uh, I, like I said, I, I cover basically carbon and media solutions as part of the portfolio. I'm joined today by uh, my colleague, Calvin Horst, and I'll let Calvin do his own introduction. Thanks, John. Uh, my name is Calvin. I am a product manager for Evoqua's Municipal Services Division. I have eight years of water and wastewater experience with Evoqua, having worked as an applications engineer previously and spending the past four years managing the product management group for Evoqua's Municipal Services Division. Prior to that, I served in the United States Navy's nuclear power program on a fast attack submarine out of Norfolk, Virginia, and as a recruiter in Cocoa Beach, Florida. So I have uh, some variable experience in, in water. Uh, municipal services, we deal primarily with order control and corrosion control of wastewater systems, but we also sell and manufacture chlorine dioxide generators and precursor chemicals for drinking water disinfection. Excellent, thank you. So our presentation outline for today is we're gonna cover capabilities. We're gonna get into some things about drinking water, uh, specifically what contaminants we look for and target for removal, uh, cover some case studies. We'll go through groundwater remediation and the different types of contaminants and then uh, different media solutions as well as a little bit on carbon reactivation, which is a sustainable process. And then I will cover those, those ones, the drinking water and groundwater remediation. Then I'll turn it over to Calvin and he will cover uh, wastewater, which includes covers, odor control, dewatering, and he will cover service and finance. So solutions really uh, are more effective with a wide range of capabilities. So this means everything from temporary to permanent solutions. We call them mobile or emergency. So with wheels or without wheels, uh, this can do anything from air to liquid. Uh, so remediation, degassing, which is so maybe venting of tanks or other things, soil vapor extraction for cleanups, dewatering of, of solids or other liquids from uh, construction remediation sites, air stripping, and a whole host of other things. We provide permanent solutions. Sometimes the temporary solutions work into permanent ones, but sometimes and, and many times we provide permanent solutions uh, that are pre-engineered and they're designed for each community's water or air based on local chemistries and what is really important to the community. So every community is different. We understand that. Each one has different needs, whether it be footprint, budget, uh, I'll say performance requirements, other things that, that go into that. So we really say that every community's needs, even within the same community, uh, two locations within a community may have very, very, very different needs based on the water source. And what, it, what they're looking for is the, the final treatment guidelines or the final treatment goals. We also provide local services which means media exchanges and scheduled maintenance things for uh, either chemical addition, service, calibrations, monitoring, other things all the way around, as well as laboratory work, analytical and other things uh, for carbon, resin, solids, things like that for filter press analysis and other things along those lines as part of dewatering uh, and industrial wastewater treatment. We also provide carbon reactivation at one of our three locations throughout the United States, which is a sustainable way to reuse carbon. Uh, we have a, a variety of different carbon reactivation solutions in there. We can do pooled carbon. We can do individual custom segregated reactivated carbon, which means you get to, as a, a community or an owner, you get to get your carbon back. Now there's usually some attritional losses that we make up, but it's a very sustainable way for maintaining the environment as well as maintaining control over your own product. There are solutions that span the entire water cycle. And we're actually gonna start in the bottom left under the municipal drinking water. So th there's a lot of different things we do. We can take seawater, brackish water, surface water, groundwater, and treat it using a variety of primary, secondary, and tertiary treatment 
options, right? Membranes, clarification, we can provide disinfection through chlorination or maybe chlorine dioxide, ultraviolet. Uh, we can do treatments for disinfection byproduct treatments, either through maybe a chlorine dioxide or maybe a media solution with carbon or uh, an organic, organic scavenging TOC resin. We can also do pressing for cake removal. We do intake screens. We do a variety of other things, right? So you're looking for a provider that can treat from one end of the cycle to the other. From a commercial standpoint, we do a lot in aquatics, which is swimming pools, not so much... Uh, I'll say residential swimming pools, but commercial swimming pools, but we do like splash pads, water parks. We also take care of large scale aquariums and we do industrial and municipal treatment in, in the aquatic world. Uh, we do filtration, we do cleaning filters, we do strainers, we do low and medium pressure ultraviolet disinfection. So we have a whole suite of products there. Industrial, we do intake screens for maybe uh, applications that draw from surface waters, whether it be rivers or lakes. Uh, we do membrane and clarification or deionization systems for boiler feed water and other types of things for makeup. We do mobile as well as permanent solutions in there as well. So something that if you have a temporary need because a well goes down or there's a drought or there's an emergency or something has to happen. Uh, we also provide laboratory systems for an analysis, blood analyzers, a whole bunch of other things. And we also provide a full suite of spares, consumables and services to back all that up. Uh, after use, we also treat the wastewater. So we uh, service wastewater treatment plants using activated carbon, ion exchange, other types of metals removal for industrial ones. We also do groundwater treatment for construction dewatering or other types of application. We do ballast water treatment on ships. And we also do on-site hypochlorite generating systems and a whole host of other things that include biological and other activated, uh, I'll say either aerobic or anaerobic, activities. And then for municipal wastewater, uh, we do once again biological treatment, clarification, filtration, nutrient removal, odor control, uh, as well as upgrades and rehabilitations uh, to things as well as providing water reuse and recycle. So we'll start off with drinking water now. So there are proven solutions for PFAS removal as well as other contaminants like perchlorate, chrome, nitrate, uh, even things like uranium, as well as uh, like perchloroethylene, trichloroethylene, and other things, other volatile organics that may have worked their way into the water supply. And once again, this can be in surface waters as well as wells. We have carbon and resin solutions on a temporary and emergency as well as permanent basis. There are pump and treat options for site remediation. We can do service exchanges and we offer attractive financing packages. Uh, we also do commercial applications where we treat military base water. Uh, we also do agricultural enhancements. And we, uh, you know, where th things have gotten in like landfills and other things where the use of, uh, I'll say, PFAS contaminated products like nonstick cookware, uh, stain resistant carpeting, uh, clothing, things like that have worked their way into the environment. We also do industrial process and wastewater treatment for manufacture of soil and so fertilizer treatment, uh, as well as other things for pharmaceutical byproducts, so atrazines and other things like that that have gotten into the water supply, treatment of fabric uh, and textile mill wastewater, as well as paper mills. And then of course, conventional municipal wastewater treatment, uh, which includes landfills and biosolids, as well as the gas that comes off of them. So removing many types of contaminants, so they come in from a variety of sources from agriculture to industry. Uh, per and polyfluoroalkyl substances or PFAS is one of the more popular ones to date these days. It's, a, it's an emerging contaminant, probably that and 1,4-dioxane, which is yet another one, are probably the two most prolific ones that are the most popular ones. Uh, if you're in an agriculture community, particularly out west, 1,2,3-trichloropropane or TCP is one. Uh, as well as a whole bunch of other things, like I said, prior nitrates, perchlorate, VOCs, even total organic carbons that may be in the water from surface water from runoff of tannins and lignans from decaying leaves and other organic material that finds its way in that may end up uh, getting into the drinking water system and may contribute to disinfection byproducts uh, through the chlorination or disinfection process. So we, we treat 
basically sources, wellhead treatment, pump and treat systems for contaminants from tanneries, mills, Superfund sites, agricultural runoff, uh, as well as things for airports and military bases. The primary solutions we use here are granular activated carbon and single pass ion exchange resin. Uh, we also, the, the carbon can also, once again, going back to, it can be reactivated for sustainable reuse. Other things in rural water areas, and we have a picture here over on the right of a rural community system where we're treating for PFAS. Uh, this site's actually in Colorado. It's a temporary system uh, that's used seasonally to treat uh, during the high tourist season, but we have solutions that are providing PFAS to non-detect levels in rural Maine, Colorado, Vermont, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Pennsylvania, as well as other metropolitan areas. And the good thing about providing these on-site treatments is it usually allows the utilities to remain independent uh, so they're not having to buy water or maybe even redrill wells so it allows them to contain their spending for development wellhead development as well as treatment Uh, as an example, as a case study in Colorado, we had an emergency application for a taste and odor application uh, to treat water for a seasonal issue. Uh, they have MIB and Jasmine issues, and they were planning on designing a new system, but the system, as going in, as, as you may know, on uh, a municipal scale, usually takes years because of funding and permitting and other things, but they needed a, a system and immediately for a, a solution, so we're able to mobile. Okay, so for remediation, once again, uh, we have a, there's suites of mobile emergency and rental systems for contaminant removal, for treating groundwater, construction dewatering, soil vapor extraction, which means they're treating contaminated soil, either through heat or steam, and then capturing the liquid in the vapor and treating it. And that includes the vapor control piece. And once again, carbon reactivation is part of an overall sustainable solution for that. That we also offer permanent solutions so that once again, based on your local water chemistry to ensure the treatment goals are met and that there's continued partnership with your utility. And the solutions are always based on testing, either laboratory or pilot testing, either on site or as I said, the bench scale testing done at our facility to confirm performance, uh, both from a flow as well as a performance standpoint as in contaminant removal, and to make sure that expectations are met so that uh, alignment of operating and capital expenses can be verified. We also do water treatment at construction sites. So this happens to be a site in Michigan uh, where they're doing construction on an off-ramp at a highway. And as part of the, the site dig, if you will, uh, the water needed to be treated for removal of PFAS, metals, organics, and suspended solids. And the water that was being treated was being just discharged to a municipal sewer. But in certain cases, this goes to lakes or rivers or surface for recharge. In this case, the the water that they were coming, the, the basically the groundwater that was percolating up from the construction was an exceedance of the, I'll say the discharge limits for PFAS metals as well as suspended solids. So we moved in and mobilized a temporary system to go on site and treat all those things so that the site could continue to operate and the customer could maintain compliance and keep on with the schedule. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Calvin to go through the wastewater portion. Great, thanks, John. Uh, moving on to wastewater, we're gonna be discussing field erected packaged wastewater treatment plants, order control capital and chemical treatment solutions, and finally sludge dewatering. Pictured uh, in the above right is Evoqua's Express Membrane Bioreactor Package Plant, which enables municipal wastewater treatment plant owners and operators to achieve high quality effluent while reducing energy and maintenance costs. This compact design comes from the factory pre-assembled and tested. Uh, and the system is skid mounted for easy installation and can treat wastewater volumes ranging from 5,000 to 200,000 gallons per day. The skid mounted system is able to treat effluent, BOD, and total suspended solids to less than 5 milligrams per liter, nitrogen to less than 10 milligrams per liter, and turbidity to less than 0 0.2 milligrams per liter. The express membrane bioreactor skid mounted design allows it to be shipped and offloaded quickly at wastewater treatment sites 
and includes pre-installed internal pumps, blowers, uh, and a prefabricated steel tank, uh, further reducing installation time and labor costs. So essentially, uh, plug and play. And below that, we're showing the ex uh, below the Express MBR is pictured the construction process of a Dave Cope field erected treatment plant. A Vocals line of field erected treatment plants offer optimum application flexibility relative to physical size, flow rates, treatment levels, and site requirements. So hearkening back to to John's comments about every not only is every utility different, but every application is different. Uh, treatment capacities range from 100,000 to 5 million gallons per day and are available in a variety of configurations, including activated sludge processes, sequencing batch reactors, uh, oxidation ditch configurations, and others. The Daveco line of field erected treatment plants are able to meet and exceed all federal and state effluent requirements by treating effluent total suspended solids in BOD to less than 10 milligrams per liter, total nitrogen to less than three milligrams per liter, and ammonia and total phosphorus to less than one milligram per liter. <clears throat> Avoqua has an industry leading suite of wastewater odor control solutions, including modular and structurally supported odor control covers, uh, capital, order control air scrubbers and chemical treatment options to mitigate the formation and release of hydrogen sulfide and other odor causing compounds. Avoqua's geomembrane retractable cover systems are structurally supported, allowing tanks to be securely covered while providing easy access to the tank's internal components for maintenance and operation. The cover system consists of a UV protected encoded fabric tensioned across a low profile aluminum arch frame spanning the entire tank opening. It is ideal for containing odors, uh, blocking sunlight to prevent algae growth, and generally keeping debris from entering the tanks. A vocal line of odor control air scrubbers includes biological, carbon adsorption, and chemical scrubber options with standard designs ranging from 75 cubic feet per minute to greater than 18,000 cubic feet per minute. We are sure to have a solution to address any wastewater odor control application. Avoqua biofilters pair well with odor control covers by providing a method to treat the contained foul air. They work by promoting the growth of sulfide oxidizing bacteria on an inorganic media inside the vessel. Uh, that's inside the air scrubber vessel, that is, not inside the covered tank. The conditions to establish the sulfide oxidizing bacteria are achieved by intermittently irrigating with water and nutrients to support the biomass growth. Foul air is then passed over the biologically active media where it is oxidized to a non-odorous sulfuric acid. Evoqua uses bioglass media as the inorganic substrate to support biological growth. The bioglass media is manufactured in the United States from acid-resistant recycled glass, and each media bed is intermittently irrigated with water and nutrients to provide optimal conditions for biomass growth. So what do you do if you can't contain or scrub the odors? Well, you, you prevent them from coming out of the wastewater in the first place. So Avoqua boasts the industry's most complete line of odor control chemicals uh, to ensure that we can address any odor control problem. Our flagship product, Bioxide, is a non-hazardous nitrate solution when that, when added to wastewater, will prevent the formation of sulfide while also biochemically oxidizing any sulfide already existing in wastewater. Um, so, so Bioxide, is kind of the Kleenex of uh, odor control chemicals. So oftentimes we'll see um, other vendors referring to uh, just general nitrate-based products as bioxide. Uh, for applications requiring faster acting solutions, uh, Evoqua provides a variety of solutions, including hydrogen peroxide and sodium chloride oxidizers, uh, iron salts that bind with the sulfide holding it into solution and calcium hydroxide slurries that leverage the sulfide pH equilibrium relationship uh, of wastewater and sulfide, transforming the sulfide into a non-volatile uh, solution. Uh-oh. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, I keep skipping slides. Here we go. So now that we've managed to remove odors uh, and process the wastewater, it's time to discuss sludge management and dewatering. So Evoqua's skid-mounted rotary press, pictured here, operates continuously at a speed of less than one rotation per minute to develop a differential pressure 
and frictional resistance, uh, effectively dewatering various types of sludges. So this simple solution coupled with um, low operational speeds results in a prolonged service life, minimal maintenance and energy consumption, while producing high quality cake solids and quality filtrate. This Avoqua technology can be efficiently integrated into new or existing wastewater plants and inc includes a PLC control package, polymer feed mixing system, rotary load pump, feed and discharge valves and piping. And Avoqua can also provide complete sludge management systems, including conveyors and dumpsters. After startup, the rotary press can run continuously 24 seven with little supervision required, making it perfect for utilities where manpower is a limited resource. If a fault is detected, a notification can be sent remotely to the operator and the machine will automatically shut down and clean in place. Automatic shutdown and wash cycles can be scheduled as desired or to meet the facility throughput requirements. The Avoca rotary press can be customized to meet specific utilities needs by adding up to four dewatering channels per press and selecting different filter screen diameters, allowing the system to process sludge flows ranging from 5 to 260 gallons per minute, depending on the configuration, and reducing moisture by up to 80 percent. Sorry about that. So we, we've spent a good amount of time uh, and mentioned a, f a couple of times throughout this presentation that uh, every wastewater is different. Now the concept of, of wastewater uh, is the same from utility to utility, but the actual characteristics of the wastewater and the goals of each utility can be wildly different. Because of this, the most effective solutions are the ones that are tailored to your utility specific needs. Uh, likewise, the most effective solution providers will work with the end user to understand their technical and financial goals and the specific conditions of their wastewater to develop solutions that will efficiently and effectively achieve the desired outcome. So takeaway here is that there are no silver bullets in wastewater, and oftentimes the best solution is the one that's designed to meet your utilities requirements. I don't know why I keep jumping multiple slides here. All right, so now that we've talked about the, the product solutions that we, we have to offer, we're going to get into uh, ongoing service. Uh, previously, when we were discussing uh, wastewater odor control solutions, uh, I made mention of, of chemical dosing or chemical treatment. Uh, so to complement the wide range of odor control product solutions we have, Vocal also offer, offers customizable service packages to monitor for compliance with odor control goals. Uh, startup and optimization of our capital solutions and full service programs where you can be assured uh, that your treatment program is going to achieve the desired outcome. So for odor control, this is achieved through a combination of our vapor link remote indicating odor control monitor and advanced dosing controllers and trained service technicians. So the vapor link hydrogen sulfide monitor combines hydrogen sulfide analysis with a remote customer interface for improved responsiveness to changes in site conditions. The VaporLink monitor is equipped with a cellular modem that communicates the log data to a Vocals Link to site platform. So this improves uh, the ability to make necessary adjustments to the chemical treatment, um, provides indication of dosing alarm set points, uh, and, and just overall provides a bit more flexibility with the treatment program. The VaporLink hydrogen sulfide monitor is available in two detection ranges, uh, ranging from zero to 200 parts per million or zero to 1,000 parts per million. Uh, for general purposes, 0 to 200 parts per million is recommended uh, for, for more, I guess, odorous applications, for lack of a better word, uh, the 0 to 1,000 ppm uh, uh, devices recommended. So the data recording interval for the VaporLink is configurable uh, with a 300 second or five minute uh, recording interval typically being sufficient to detect slow changing hydrogen sulfide levels. Uh, in applications where concentrations change a bit more rapidly, uh, a 60-second recording in interval may be recommended. Now, the, the recording interval 
can be changed uh, to log as frequently as one second or as infrequently as an hour. Uh, and the log, da log data can then be transmitted up to link to site, uh, the link to site interface either hourly, every, once every four hours or once a day. The vapor link also uh, sends instantaneous alarms whenever hydrogen sulfide concentrations exceed um, high and daily average set points uh, with the recipients being configurable as well. So what I mean by that is uh, alarm notifications can be sent uh, via SMS text message uh, or email to utility employees and Avoco employees alike. Now to get uh, the chemicals into the wastewater system as efficiently and effectively as possible, uh, the Avoqua VersaDose Advanced Dosing Controller automatically adjusts chemical dose rates uh, to match changing levels of hydrogen sulfide and can incorporate field knowledge to adapt to changing system conditions. Uh, this is achieved through two different dosing options, either dosing off of a 168 point dose rate curve, which uh, is one individual dose rate for every hour of the week, or dosing proportional to the wastewater flow rate when a flow signal is available. So <clears throat> large scale adjustments can also be made to the daily and weekly dose rates using uh, the system's daily and global adjustment factor. So this is just uh, quite literally a percentage adjustment to either every dose rate for a given day of the week, if you adjust a daily, uh, you know, a Monday through Sunday daily factor, or uh, you can adjust all of them at once by adjusting the global factor. Uh, the Versa dose further optimizes chemical dose rates by automatically making adjustments for changes in wastewater temperature or indication of excessive inflow and infiltration. Um, in the case of temperature, literature suggests a change of um, a, a change of 7% in biological activity per change in degrees Celsius. So this is a configurable set point in our uh, system. Again, um, not every system operates exactly the same way. So uh, we don't we don't expect our dosing equipment to, to operate exactly the same way. Um, so the idea here is that uh, systems that respond a little bit more slowly can uh, have a, a set point that's a bit more modest so that the the chemical dosing changes a bit more slowly, uh, and, and those that are, you know, change more rapidly, can we can assign a more aggressive uh, set point. Uh, we can even turn the chemical treatment off entirely if the wastewater temperature drops low enough. So rain, snow melt, and other sources of influent infiltration uh, affect sulfide production in three different ways, uh, either reducing the wastewater temperature, diluting the wastewater chemistry, or uh, decreasing the hydraulic retention time available for sulfide to be generated. So by measuring uh, flow above an established baseline, the Versa dose controller can reduce or turn off entirely the chemical dosing to account for these factors, reducing wastewater, uh, reducing waste, excuse me, and providing more efficient odor control program. So in addition to uh, these digital monitoring and control mechanisms, uh, we also have routine monitoring uh, of wastewater parameters through our full service order control programs. This typically occurs monthly with one of our field service technician, but the fre frequency can be adjusted to meet, again, specific customer needs and includes measurements of things like sulfide, uh, pH, temperature, uh, ORP, and other chemi and pro chemical product residuals where, where appropriate. Um, and in addition to the monitoring aspect of this, we can also provide routine and corrective maintenance on air scrubbers, chemical dosing equipment, uh, you know, other other capital solutions and emergency visits are included in a full service or control program as well. <clears throat> so to complement uh, those kind of product-based service offerings, Vocal also offers routine service options, uh, including vector services, tank cleaning and sanitizing, uh, degassing, uh, et cetera. And these can be provided uh, either ad hoc or on some sort of regular maintenance interval. Uh, and, and really the benefit here is leveraging uh, the industry expertise uh, and the knowledge of our service technician based uh, to uh, operate and repair and maintain uh, vocal equipment. I think my, my button's not operating properly. So recognizing that the needs of each utility differ not only by the characteristics of their water and wastewater systems, but also by the type of funding available to the utility, uh, Vocal offers a number of payment options to fit your needs, including uh, lease to own, 
uh, rental solutions, capital purchase of equipment, um, build, own, operate, uh, even service level agreements where uh, certain outcomes are agreed upon and, and met for you know some sort of flat fee uh, on on some sort of interval. <clears throat> Uh, and our financing options ensure that the water and wastewater solutions are accessible to communities of any size. And our expansive service network ensures that serv service-based solutions um, are typically no more than, than a day away. So whether it be an emergency service visit for an existing piece of equipment or to support discovery and solutioning of an emerging problem or, or even to quickly mobilize a service-based solution for you know, a temporary uh, issue. Evoqua's expansive technical service team exists to make sure that your water quality needs are met. So you can see the, the map here that we have, um, obviously in, in population dense states, uh, a bit more of a presence, but uh, ranging from east to west and even into Canada, we have uh, service and manufacturing and laboratory uh, locations all over the United States. So John and I both thank you for your time today um, and we're happy to entertain any questions. Thank you, if you have, if you have questions, there's a question chat box in the webinar if you could type your questions in there. Uh, we've gotten a couple so far, so uh, I think we'll, we'll try and read through some of them. Uh, if we don't get to your question for some, for some reason, uh, since we do have a list, we will make sure we get back to you. If you put your name, uh, it says it requires you to put your name on the ask. We'll make sure we reach back out to you because uh, we will get <clears throat> a contact list from uh, Cheyenne on, on who to ask the questions. And we'll make that, that I'll say, available to all attendees as well. So uh, the first question is, uh, what's the minimum time required to do an adequate pilot test? Uh, typically, for for uh, if we go with a, a rapid small scale test versus a pilot test, so a rapid small scale column test is done with like a two centimeter column in our lab. It takes about six weeks, depending upon the contaminants and their concentrations, for a pilot, which is really run as a slipstream, uh, whether it's carbon, resin, or other. It could take anywhere from six months to a year to run. Uh, the difference between the two is uh, the rapid small scale column test, the, the laboratory test is really a snapshot. So it's really kind of more accurate for groundwater, which does not change seasonally. Uh, whereas if you're running on a surface water, which does have seasonal fluctuations, pilots may provide a longer term uh, prediction of what you have as it goes through the seasons and the variances. Uh, there, are, there are other advantages to both, one over the other, the time, the cost, the amount of time. Like I said, you know, the, the resources and availability. So thank you. Uh, I have another question. How do the costs compare between carbon and resin? So resin is typically three to five times as expenses, expensive, excuse me, as carbon. Uh, but for system sizing, the empty bed contact time or the residence time in the vessel for resin is three to five times less. So the run times or the run lengths between media exchanges for carbon and resin tend to be comparable. Uh, the, the PFAS composition of the influent or whatever you're treating, whether it's uh, uh, you know, a short chain or a long chain, uh, along with the overall treatment goals and the, the testing, whether it be on-site pilot or bench scale testing, will determine the best CapEx and OpEx solution uh, for, for your system. So John, there's another question. It says, do you have any water and wastewater systems deployed in rural parts of Tennessee, specifically in the, sorry if I butcher this, Sequatchie Valley? So I don't know that we have any from a drinking water. I don't know on the wastewater systems, maybe Calvin can answer that, but we can certainly investigate and get back to you. So but Calvin, do you? Do you happen to know if we have any either odor control or, or wastewater systems? 
So yes, uh, I believe we do. I'm, I'm trying to find uh, specific specifics about that, but um, uh, I know I know we have a number of customers in in Tennessee um, and some of the more metropolitan areas, and I'm and I'm fairly certain we have a good spread all throughout uh, the state. There, bear with me a minute. I can put some filters on and figure out exactly where they are. Uh, so so a lot near Chattanooga, um, some up in Johnson City. Um, let's see, what is this one? Uh, Clinton, Tennessee. Uh, so not not too sure on on the geography, but I believe uh, that Sasquatchie Valley is kind of the the eastern side of of Tennessee, and we and we do have some kind of in that in that area. Okay, and then another question. I think it was more of a statement. I don't know if you guys can see this, the comment about um, radon. Sure. Yeah, uh, yes, there's a thing about 210 polonium. Uh, normally for certain radionuclides, ev Evoqua doesn't really get into the direct treatment of that. It's more of an engineered solution. Uh, we can treat certain things like we do have certain systems for uranium. Uh, it's a little bit easier to treat. It's not as highly radioactive. Um, there's usually a lot more that goes into that. So we'd recommend uh, working with an engineering uh, and consulting firm that has more specialty in that uh, for, for treatment of radionuclides. There are certain resins that can do that, but it's uh, it's a little bit more challenging of a solution. So. I'll look into that a little bit more, uh, and and I'll 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 get in. I'll see if I can get you any other direction on that. But right now, I don't know of any sites where we're treating um, 210 polonium or or anything along those lines. We don't do a whole lot with radon treatment ourselves, at least from our perspective on the drinking water end of it. So my, my apologies, but that's that's where we're at. Okay, we had a couple more. Um, you mentioned temperature, wastewater flow as factors contributing to the formation and release of hydrogen sulfide. Are there any factors that contribute to the formation formation of H2S and can these factors be used to optimize chemical dose rates? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So there, there are a variety of um, factors that contribute to formation and release of hydrogen sulfide. Um, so, so things like uh, turbulence, for example, uh, is, is a good one. Um, again, the big ones being uh, temperature, pH, uh, wastewater flow, hydraulic retention time. But it, it, in addition to those, there are just the physical characteristics of of a wastewater conveyance system. So things like uh, pipe length and diameter uh, all determine how much time the wastewater spends in the pipe, along with the the amount of water that's actually moving through it. Um, so Increasing the amount of time the water spends in the pipe allows sulfate reducing bacteria more time to consume the sulfate uh, and results in higher hydrogen sulfide concentrations. So we are able to optimize chemical dose rates based on um, you know temperature and, and uh, wastewater flow, like I mentioned, also slow uh, rain, snow melt, uh, and then again the pre-programmed uh, weekly dose curve or uh, dosing proportional to wastewater to changes in wastewater flow. Okay, and then a little more detail about how the automated rotary press works. Um, sure. So, so the automated, I mentioned the automated shutdown and wash cycles. Um, those can be programmed into the to the PLC for the rotary press. Uh, but under normal operation, the conditioned sludge is just kind of continuously fed into the system between two filter screens in the press, uh, and then pressure is applied. Uh, to the sludge, forcing the, the filtrate, the water, to take kind of the path of least resistance out through the filter screens. And then the retained sol solids are held against the screen as the system, you know, continues to, to move slowly at that less than one rotation per minute, uh, removing more water along the way. So the, the solids then slowly move up towards the discharge. So you just kind of imagine like uh, it's, it's more of a, of a counterclockwise movement, but, but like the sweeping hands of a, of a clock just moving everything um, along further. And, and then as it moves, more water is getting, 
you know, removed from, from the, the sludge. So the solids slowly move towards a discharge into the system where there's a pressure resistor uh, gate that slows the movement so that the cake starts to form there. Uh, pressure builds up until such time that the cake's big enough to kind of push through that that gate, um, at which point it you know exits the press and goes into either a, a conveyor or a, a dumpster or whatever you know whatever you're receiving your your solids into. All right, and then one more. If not all wastewater odor issues are the same, how does Evoqua go about? choosing the correct solution for an odor control problem? Yeah, that's a, that's a fun question. So um, this is where kind of leveraging, you know, the expertise and understanding the, the difference between uh, leveraging the expertise of our uh, VOQA engineers and service technicians and understanding the difference between uh, different utilities, uh, chemistry, uh, budget, um, and and kind of goals really matter so again it comes down to not every not every application is the same and there's no there's no silver bullet for for every wastewater treatment application uh so we really kind of value providing transparency uh and objective compliance so to do this we first accept and kind of what the goals are of the customer um, so that's with respect to both budget and regard to order levels uh, and once we've we've established uh, what the budget targets and the odor control limits are. Uh, we analyze the system, we conduct what we call initial discovery, uh, and then determine what the most cost-effective solution is uh, selected from our suite of products. Um, now, having having said that, budget targets and odor control limits don't always coincide, so it may be you know, an iterative process, so there may be a, you know, a conversation of uh, you know, this particular application uh, cannot be, you know, resolved for, you know, the proposed budget. So we we get into either talking about different budget options um, or changing, you know, what the objective is of, of the application. So really, it's it's a it's a exercise of balancing um, goals, budget, and available technology to select which one, you know, best triangulates with those three things. All right, guys, I don't see a lot of other questions. If you guys have any, you're more than willing to read them out. Uh, there, there, was, there was one about step systems in Tennessee. Uh, the question specifically, do we, do we offer um, step systems in Tennessee? And I don't, I don't believe that uh, that is part of our product portfolio, but we do have, uh, a good amount of experience treating for odor control, uh, kind of low pressure sewers. Um, and uh, specifically in Tennessee, actually, we have a, a, a pretty good um, case study on our website, wherein uh, kind of a, a lake community, a high-end lake community with a bunch of uh, kind of low pressure grinder sewers just had very, you know, very bad hydrogen sulfide issues, uh, extremely high levels, and, and they were having problems resolving it because of the the way that those types of communities and systems work uh, you know traditional odor control applications were not effective so we ended up having to to come up with a new method of injecting you know essentially what we did is put chloride uh, directly into um, the receiving line so that we could quickly oxidize any sulfide that came whenever you know one of the one of the residential step systems fired on so the answer to the question is we don't have them as part of our product portfolio, but we have pretty good experience in working with them in, in a wastewater collection system. <laughs> 